What is up guys, this is Kai from Kai Creative and welcome to another film making video. Today I am counting down my top 10 tips for absolute beginner video makers. So you've been asked to film a friend's party, event or wedding video and because you own a DSLR camera or camcorder that automatically makes you a filmmaker, right? Wrong. So I occasionally look back at the footage that I filmed years ago and I'm generally mortified by the mistakes and filming for pars that I personally made. So today I'm counting down my top 10 tips to help absolute beginner video makers not repeat the same mistakes that I made and to get your footage looking as professional as possible regardless of the camera setup that you are using. So let's get started. Number 10. Point number 10 is to make sure you use a tripod. I can't stress this point enough. Shaky footage is what makes most first time videographers video content look amateuristic. Don't walk with the camera. Yes, there are things like warp stabilizer that can help you in post production, but you don't want to set yourself up for heavy post production work later on. So unless you're using a Glycam or a gimbal, which you wouldn't if you're a first time video maker, don't walk with your camera use a tripod. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can pick up a cheap one from eBay for a few pounds or a few dollars. Number nine. Point number nine is to avoid constant zooming in and out. When I shot my very first wedding video, I remember watching the footage and literally screaming at the screen because there wasn't one steady shot for more than a second. For some reason, I kept zooming in and out. When you are just starting out in video making, you might feel like you have to constantly be doing something. So you fall into this trap of constantly moving the camera or constantly zooming in and out. It is okay to just leave the shot recorded. So my recommendation would be that if you're filming b-roll then hold your shot for 10 seconds Literally count in your head for 10 seconds then zoom in and film for another 10 seconds If you're filming longer shots like presentations seminars ceremonies or talks then shoot in five minute sections Then zoom in and film for another five minutes or change your camera angle and film for another five minutes If you do zoom in or change angle then do so during a pause in the presentation or seminar So when it comes to editing you can cut it clearly number eight number eight is to use the rule of threes film in threes get the shots that you need to tell a story so if you're filming a person or a thing or a group of people then get at least three different angles of that same shot remember to change your angle by at least 30 degrees for each new shot to avoid things called jump cuts again applying these rules will get your shots looking as professional as possible now we've done a longer video specifically on the rule of threes and the 30 degree rule so go check out those links in the description below. Number seven. Another rule you definitely want to consider following is the rule of thirds. For the rule of thirds, you have to imagine two horizontal and two vertical lines going across your screen, breaking your screen up into nine sections with four interconnecting points. The rule of thirds stipulates that by having your subjects of interest on these lines or at the four connecting points, you will make your shot much more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Now we've created a whole video on the rule of thirds already, the link is in the description below. Number six. You might have heard before that good sound is 50% of your production. I can't personally guarantee that ratio, but I can agree that good sound is essential if you want your production to be more polished. So if you are filming a talk or a seminar or a ceremony, then arrange to get a copy of clean audio from the DJ or the audio desk. Now, if they can't supply you with a separate clean audio file, then put a separate MP3 player or even an iPhone with an attached microphone onto your speaker to ensure you get good sound and you can then sync this up later in post. Poor sound definitely screams amateur. Number five. Point number five is to catch reactions. People smiling, people laughing, people surprised. All of these facial reactions evoke emotion in your viewers. Now when we see someone smiling in real life or laughing, then we start to smile or laugh and this is true if we see it on the screen. Also don't forget to film people's hands, their gestures, and get wide shots or full body shots. Again, when doing this, apply the rule of threes. It must be said that it can be quite awkward to film people's faces, especially if they notice that you're filming them. And my trick for doing this is to set up a camera on a person that I want to film, who looks like they might be happy and smiling or laugh, uh, and then to look around as if I'm not filming them. Uh, and then when they're not suspecting it, to hit record and to film them and hopefully get a good reaction. Now I like to minimize this awkwardness by using a zoom lens so I can hide out of the way and capture 
those facial reactions. Number four. Point number four is to film the details. Everything, absolutely everything is about storytelling. Something people didn't tell you is that by being a cameraman or camera woman for the day, that you are also automatically the storyteller of the content that you are filming. So get everything, get the banners, logos, table arrangements, get name cards, guest favors, trophies, awards, flower arrangements, film absolutely all the detail. Things at events can be fast paced and you don't want to miss anything, so be ready. Number three. Point number three is to use a two camera setup if possible. Now, depending on what you're filming, having a second camera setup as a safety shot might be essential. This is especially important for events like wedding vows and speeches where you can't easily move around with your main camera. Having that second safety shot can save you when you need to adjust your main camera. You can just simply cut away to the safety shot and then cut back to your main camera if you need to move it or adjust it. Now, you might not have a second camera, but nowadays you can use things like blending services, something like Fat Llama, to hire one for super cheap. Just ask your friend or whoever's asked you to film the event to pay for it. Number two. Point number two is to be mindful of lighting. One of the big filming faux pas that most first time filmmakers make is to film towards bright lights, such as bright windows or even the sun. If there are bright windows in your background, move away from them. Rearrange your shots so that the bright lights are behind you. Additionally, when it comes to filming in low light conditions, you want to make sure your lens has a big aperture. Cameras do make the difference, but the lenses you use are make or break. Something like a 1.8 or a 1.4 50mm Canon lens can be a lifesaver in dark hotel rooms or for the first dance at a wedding. Again, you can rent one on websites like Fat Llama for extremely cheap prices. By the way, we are not sponsored by Fat Llama, but if Fat Llama is watching this and do want to sponsor us or sponsor a video, then please do get in touch. Number one. So one of the most important points on our list is to watch what other people have done in the past. Whatever you're filming, whether it's an event, party, seminar, speech, conference, music video, go online and see what other people have created. Now, back in 2013, when I signed my first wedding, I got an email from the bride with an example of a wedding trailer that she liked, and she asked me to film something similar to that. Now, this trailer was amazing. It had all the bells and whistles. Uh, this particular piece that she sent me was a seasoned wedding videographer, and their price list was a few thousand pounds higher than what I had just charged them. Also, the gear that they used was also much more expensive than mine by a few thousand pounds. Now, I could have got offended and brought this to their attention, and I would have been within my rights to do so. But instead of that, I simply forwarded on my showreel to them again and said that this was my current level, but I would try my best to accommodate this style of videography. So I set my client expectation, but I also set myself a goal to mimic this advanced season competitor's work. I literally studied all of his trailers and kept asking myself, how did they get that shot and how can I replicate it? Now, some people might say that you need to develop your own style and way of doing things, but this definitely comes with time. By checking out other people's content and methods and asking yourself, how can I achieve the same results? Doing that will definitely help you with your video making game. So that's my top 10 tips for absolute beginner video makers. If you find this content valuable, then please do like this video. And if you know anyone that's getting into DSLR videography or has an event to film, then please do share it with them. We have a growing library of filmmaking content on Kai Creative, so please do go check that out and subscribe to Kai Creative for more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to imagine, implement and inspire, and I'll see you guys next time on Kai Creative.